Hello everyone. I would like to talk about some very interesting ideas in regards to how we begin with a sense of linearity and organized structure to things and then we, 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 we begin to, in a sense, uh, discover a non-linearity in our linearity. In other words, once you observe how things are being kept linear, you, 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 you begin to have an awareness that is non-linear. In other words, your imagination and creativity opens up when you begin seeing different things based on different values of experience. So what that means is that before I meet someone, usually people have an idea or an assumption or an impression of someone. Once you meet them, you suddenly change. And you see that before they, you can judge things before clearly seeing it. And then having that elusive way of it. What that means is that we must have the ability to hold limitless value in our gaze. We must have limitless value in our understanding of others. What that means, in a sense, is that once you observe your linearity, once you understand every method in which you've utilized to understand things and to discover things, you see that in a, after a linear system is observed, its non-linear presence is the presence of a greater linearity. And I don't want to confuse you with these words, I'm just saying that what doesn't make sense to us, makes sense to other beings, other points of attention and observance. So what that means is that, let's say if you thought of something, let's say you think of a character in your mind. Let's say I'm thinking of Mr. Within. But the reality is a greater mind conceiving, a lower conception to even look at. How can you observe something? How can you look at something smaller and learn from it is because you're standing at a higher place. It's only from the terrace that you're clearly seeing how many heads are walking, you know, or how many heads there are, you know? Um, so in other words, the eagle's vision is much greater as it ascends, as it begins to march, uh, experience life more holistically. Therefore, it is only in an acknowledgement of the things that you feel don't make sense to you that you can have a complete moment of meaning in other stories. What that means is, think of it this way. You have right now created your own story, and in a sense what I say created, it's the product of the movement of your environment into giving you uh, a meaningful self-awareness. You are perceiving meaning because you're the one who is aware of certain memories of yourself. Now, I don't want to get into unique situations where there are exceptions, but when you forget something, the way you remember it is never in the same approach as how you forgot it. What that means is that our memories are always being, being newly communicated in the present moment. And so, what was our rationality in the past is again our newer rationality now. So, we choose how much stability we want to see in a system which it has unknown qualities and factors. But we have to embrace all of it. And what that means is that our unknown must be recognized and in a sense transcended through by our knowing. That means you have one knowing of yourself as being in this human body. And then you get knowing of yourselves being your moment and in a sense being an I don't want to say unobservable, but once you're observant of the design, you're part of a greater design. That's all I'm saying. I think this can be used as some kind of uh, reference. Because we are exploring experience, and such an exploration can imply many things. And so once we play around with our rationality, we see that the irrational were never wrong, but present in a world we couldn't understand. And so, when has not understanding made us bash things we know or don't know? When did man begin pointing fingers? And that's when re um, religion or science or any other concept was misunderstood. How man be approaches language is more important than how what the language or the theories or the words or the written sacred texts or the holy books are communicated.
What that means is we're not here to choose what is holy or not. It is not man that decides the extra attention man gets. And when I say extra attention, do not even think about it because you cannot linearly understand this. What that means is that you, the way you can utilize a higher consciousness at this point, in my view, very immediately without any substances or anything, is by understanding that what is to you linear, linearly rational is one line. And once you have observed the irrationality to your, uh, to, once you have observed the non-linearity to your first linear rationality, then the awareness of both of them is a new ability to create a greater rationality. What that is, is man gets overwhelmed by imagery, then gives a meaning. But when that moment where he's getting overwhelmed, where he's in that moment, he doesn't need to take snapshots. In other words, I find trying to interpret from a limited linear rationality, the greatness that even is the greater rationality that covers the unknown, you know, uh, non-linearity of the first linearity, you know, it, it, it's, it's in a sense, allowing yourself to know without the, re the relative entrapment of the consideration of space and time. In other words, guys, you need to see how much the fluctuation of your space and time experience is up to you, is relevant to you. Because you see, once you pay attention to the moment, your analysis goes through structures that have been presented to be the most trustworthy um, rationale. What that means is that I don't, my understanding of gravity comes from a science textbook more than a religious book. Because science is fully paying attention to that detail, to that imagery. But if you see religion, religion is paying to attention to a different imagery. And you know, different people like different paintings. You can't tell someone this painting isn't good. Who are you to say what is good? Who are you to say what is true or not true for another person? You're only a being who can communicate your truth so, I guess in a sense, clearly that it is no longer an isolated space. In other words, a lot of the truths or a lot of my ideas I'm sharing, if you get offended by it, you are making it a static to be offended. You're giving image to my voice to become a certain you know, reaction for you, do you know, if you're reacting to my voice. But if you're not, you can see that dynamic truths are truths that are true in, multi, in multiple dimensions. So what is a paradox is in essence two realities of coexisting truth. And the awareness to this opens up your ability to simulate realities that are stimulating different bodies. But it is an awareness, in other words, you are in a sense, you do need a map, but nobody gives you the map, you have the map. And that map is an inner sense of remembrance. Because when we talk about knowing, we think about memory. And when we think about memory, we don't, we're not defining memory as an intelligent system. We're just talking about it like files in a computer. And we may think that's useful, but we need to realize we are experiencing, we are choosing how to experience our bodies. And in a sense, how, how we're experiencing our body and how, um, how many bodies we experience in, guys. And trust me, the mind has not developed to experience multiple bodies. Not, it's not a mind thing. Because when I say the mind is not developed, the mind has to permit its linearity to be naturally translated by that which doesn't make sense, that which is not linear. So what that means is you can, um, in a sense, keep your attention on games that are doubting things or being certain or uncertain in different ranges of view. But it's not about that, it's about your view. So when I think about what home, think about what home feels like to you, but an existential home. What that means is like, think about your greater state of being and know that it's, an un, it's unknown to you now, that's why you're not in that state of being. But once you, in a sense, reveal to yourself the ambition that is just present in your energy, you see that you are already given all the tools you need to complete any task. Any moment provides access to all moments to help you complete anything. And so you need to be creative with your intelligence. A human being's ability is based on the faith one can find 
in one's imagination to be a real manifestation. So if you truly believe in miracles, trust me, miraculous things will begin to happen. But if miracles to you are just better images of where you are now, you're not even in the right appreciation to be open up to a concept. So I noticed that it wasn't about my knowledge that I went to certain unique experiences. It was simply my sincerity. The path of the spiritual being is one that is not completely consumed by the rational mind. It is an allowance of irrationality to communicate more to the rationality that is present. So what that means is that you must let your mind interact with its own way of bringing things creatively out from the unknown. Your instinct or our, our design, our, our in a sense both mechanical and biological design, but is, is one where life is alive with an intelligence that is aware of itself in many ways. Just think about how many ways you can look at yourself and be aware of yourself. So you are, um, the, let's say, the ape's first infinite gaze as human consciousness. So as human consciousness, we don't want to look at the ape that much, but we want to see where the human being is evolving to. So, you know, I, I don't care about God that much. I want to see where I am now because now is where I'm being created to perceive. These are the spectrums. And once you begin to clearly appreciate the signs of your day, you then begin to um, work with the flow of your life. And when I say flow of your life, it's also the flow of your intuition. So if you see that you're not, you're not, you don't have a reality of this stuff, it's because you haven't lived a life to make that real for you. So an atheist has not lived a life where meaning can be presented in one's, um, in a sense, self-created with co-creatively induced sense of reality. We smile many times, but at the same time, all smiles come down to a plain expression because our natural expression is considered to be normal, to be standard. You need to understand what is normal is unknown factors being averaged out, I find. And you cannot do that. I cannot tell you that you are this type of human being. I cannot define your ability to um, be present with an infinity. That is your experience, your experiential understanding. So we understand that that which is experiencing is present in a way which it can't all be linearly explained. So that's when your interest comes to a formless view. Because what is the path when you can't see a path? What is the solution when there is no problem? And that's when life's language with you changes. The way you, your, your thinking, your, your patterns uh, change in a sense, become transparent. Promotion is extra weight. And if you feel you have to promote something, that means you're invested in, in, in it in a, in a way where um, you're seeing too much material value in something that is not just valued materialistically. You see guys, acknowledge the fact that you are your best guide and your ability to see yourself is your best guidance. And so, a lot of people who get excited about these um, psychic ideas of, you know, for example, being clairvoyant, being clairaudient, you know, clairsentience, or all this cultural imagery we have over ideas that are abstract. When we try to linearize abstraction, like abstract concepts, it, it would be like me trying to interpret um, Leonardo da Vinci's artwork only through, without the, the random variables of other life forms being involved in my life. So it's like once you accept your clay, it is very hard to see yourself um, fluid in any other way. Self-reflection then becomes a sense of knowing because you're, you're in a sense observing the separation and consciously seeing whether you want to choose it or not. What that means is once you see that you can be aware of things outside of the box, 
You never needed a box in the first place. There never was a box. You know, it's that kind of elevation. And so, when you see that there never was a box, how can you explain that to everybody who thinks they're trapped in a box? Where you can't do it from inside the box. All you can say is, see if it's really a box. See if you're really trapped. See if you're in this really sinful or state of being where you're trapped. Human consciousness is evolving. You have better equipment to handle life's uh, consultations with you. Life, interact, life must interact with you in ways where eternity is always felt because it was there present, untouched. You never had to seek for eternity. You were eternal. And what that suggests is that you thought that there would be a linear death from what is present here, but the present can't change. What that means is that the ex you may experience death, but the moment of experience never fades. That awareness to all that passes cannot fade. It is defined by the motion.